Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. This talk will present a compelling reason to use one of the lesser known functions found in C++. STD Launder. The committee added STD Launder to solve a very specific problem. The articles we found about STD Launder claimed almost no one needs this function and the compiler should be able to handle pointers on its own. Most of the examples use placement new and talk about STD launder in terms of optimization. We want to explain a situation which does not fall into either of these two categories. In this video, we are going to present code that we believe most programmers, even those already familiar with STD launder, have probably not considered. We will start with a basic example to show when and how to use STD launder. Then we will explain how we discovered a serious bug and why a pointer issue went undetected for so long. So what exactly is STD launder? It is a function <clears throat> template which is part of the C++ 17 standard library. There's one argument for launder and it must be a raw pointer. You cannot omit this argument because there's no default value. The return value from this function is a new raw pointer, which will point to the same memory location as the past argument. Calling std launder does not change the object pointed to, and it will not alter the past argument. The entire purpose is simply to create a raw pointer to access the given object. Why do we need to call a function which simply returns a pointer when we already had one? Is this function really doing anything? Now we have two pointers which point to the same memory location, but these pointers are not identical. If you look at the properties of each pointer, it may not be obvious that the argument pointer and the laundered pointer are not equivalent. So let's look at a basic example to understand why these pointers can be different. On the first line of this example, we are declaring a new variable, allocating space on the heap to store a 32-bit integer, and then initializing the integer object to the number 5. On the next line, we call reinterpret cast on PTR, and create a new pointer called bad PTR. PTR is a pointer to an int 32, and bad PTR is a pointer to an int 16. This cast is perfectly valid, because it is legal to cast between two different pointer types. In order to dereference a pointer created from a cast, the data type of the new pointer must be related to the type of the original pointer. The standard uses the term type accessible to describe if two pointer types are related. Based on the rules in the standard, integers of different sizes are not type accessible. Therefore, you cannot safely dereference bad PTR because this is undefined behavior. Calling std launder creates a new pointer, which is valid and can be dereferenced safely. Remember, this is a templated function, and the t deduced from bad PTR will be used to create new PTR. Launder is directing the compiler to trust the programmer and please just create a valid pointer based on the one it receives. Dereferencing new PTR is not UB, and we have now solved a problem. So how does this apply to our story about using STD Launder? We had a class which worked as expected on a variety of different platforms, including Ubuntu 2204. Adding Ubuntu 2404 to our CI matrix did not break our build. However, our catch test failed. Our first question was to consider if the newer compiler might be broken, which is sort of silly. Then we asked, Maybe this is a false positive, since the code was working everywhere else. The error message 
indicated we had a buffer overflow writing to an array. Since we consider ourselves responsible programmers, this required us to ask an uncomfortable question. Could our code be broken, and why? We searched the internet for our error message and found several other projects reporting a similar error with Ubuntu 2404. In each case, these projects discovered the runtime error was exposing a real bug which had been missed. Their code was actually running off the end of a buffer, and it was pretty simple for them to resolve. As we traced through the array implementation in our code, we confirmed the buffer allocation requested enough memory. There was no way we had a real buffer overflow. Now what? Let's review our class to show what we were doing and why the program really was broken. The code we are showing has been modified slightly and several unrelated data members were removed. Our actual code uses a class, but using a struct will make this easier to read. Our struct is called array data, and it contains one data member, which is used to store the length of our buffer. This buffer size is stored as part of the metadata. The buffer data will be stored in memory immediately after the metadata. Line 1 declares a pointer to an array data object. On line 2, the malloc function allocates enough space for the metadata and a buffer of 50 bytes. On the next line, we store the size of our buffer in the metadata. Skipping to line 5, the call to stir copy is used to copy text into our buffer. The signature of this function requires a care star as the first argument. Since all we have is a pointer to an array data object, we need to use a reinterpret cast to convert the array data pointer to a care pointer. Calling the reinterpret cast on line four is fine. But since the stir copy function is going to dereference the buffer pointer, we need to consider if this dereference is safe. This is where the runtime error occurred. It turns out dereferencing our current buffer pointer is undefined behavior. The only reason we encountered this bug is because the Ubuntu compiler team decided to change a single compiler defined from two to three. This higher value alters the runtime checks when calling standard C functions like stircopy, memset, and sprintf. The value for this macro can be raised in your build files on most Linux platforms, and we do encourage developers to do so. Our exact runtime error message said the buffer size was zero and the data could not be copied. Since we had UB, it is not surprising the error was a bit misleading. The solution is to launder our buffer pointer. The data types of array data and care are not type accessible. So even though the reinterpret cast was correct, the improved runtime checks detected a real problem. The new code shown here replaces our original call to the reinterpret cast. This one minor change resolved our runtime error. One of the reasons why our use case is different from other launder examples is the array data class is not an allocator based container. You can tell this because the API for array data contains no template parameters. Since we are always using malloc, and it returns a raw pointer, we can guarantee there is always a raw pointer to pass to STD launder. This is not a promise which can be made about containers like STD vector, where a user can define their own allocator. Since there might not be a raw pointer, launder cannot be used. 
Some developers think STD launder simply turns off optimizations and then your code works again. Launder might change certain optimizations, but this is not a good way to think about it. Looking back at our original code, the compiler was correct and we had a real error. We did not have an optimization problem. Our suggestion is to take runtime error messages seriously. If the problem can be solved by calling STD launder, do your homework and make sure this is the correct solution. For more information about the Copper Spice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back for our next video.